So a lot of critters were were harmed by this fire, unfortunately. There's a lot of rabbits around. So this guy clearly was in this little remnant patch. Uh, maybe he was hanging out here, or probably more likely he was somewhere in this field that was burned, and he probably ran to here for some cover, and unfortunately he wasn't singed, but he was just totally um, uh, cooked, probably, essentially. So very sad. We have a lot of impact all around, and a lot of wildlife has been harmed here. So we have one bright spot here. Here's some of our cages out here at Camp Park. One of the bright spots with regards to this burn is, and it almost, it, it seems very strange, but um, our burn monitoring project did not, did not really burn that much. So, so this was our monitoring efforts to look at what a previous burn, of uh, the, the Condors, the Model Airplane Club, had crashed a plane here this past summer and set off um, about a one to two acre fire right here that was caught really quickly, thankfully. Um, but this whole area had burned last year. And so this was one of my students, uh, Jesse McCandless, has been monitoring the, the insect response to that burn. And <laughs> because the fuel le lows, levels have been so reduced from that fire, this is the one area, right? You can see right here it's burned, 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 but not in this particular treatment. We had treatments over here that he, we're monitoring as well in this, in this heavily scarred, burned area, but uh, this will make some interesting comparisons. We had monitoring transects in the grassland, uh, grassland here and then in the burned area as part of our support and monitoring for the long-term restoration of this site. So there's going to be some interesting stuff come out of this this treatment at least. But generally speaking you can see how how devastated most of the Camarillo Regional Park area here has been. The hillsides are totally nuked, totally um, denuded as far as the burn. Um, and uh, this area here that was that was chopped recently and burned recently um, wasn't as, as heavily impacted. But uh, here we go. So this is May 4th, about two days after this fire came through in 2013. Another thing of note is that we've exposed a lot of infrastructure here. Um, with this, with this burn, so stuff that we never saw, that I never saw, to be able to actually map the topography has become much clearer. You can see we almost have, almost have retention basins in here. Um, again, this was one large, giant, flat floodplain, river floodplain, Cuyahoga's Creek over there with the more intact vegetation. Uh, water would flood up here, and it appears as what they ba what they did back in the 30s is was to come up and put in some berms to put in these roads over here, put in uh, the road we're on here, etc. Um, that levee, for example, out there, and, uh, and in effect create these, these depressional areas um, in this, uh, surrounded by a relatively high elevational boundary. And so we'll have a much better idea in terms of infrastructure what's here than we've been able to have for many, many years. So uh, one slight, slight upside to this. We'll have a better understanding of the structural goings on here um, that will really uh, help us with our planning for the eventual restoration of this.